Hey guys, so today I'm doing a voiceover of my newest retouching video. Um, I know you guys have said that hearing what I'm doing while I'm doing it would be better, so we're going to try that out. Uh, let me know what you think of it, if I should slow my videos down a bit, or if you'd rather I just talk while I'm doing the editing. So let me know what you think, and uh, let's get started. So I'm opening the image up in Camera Raw and doing some lighting adjustments. And then I go into Hue Saturation Luminance Adjustments and play around with the colors and try and get the color palette that I'm really looking for. Um, just basically experimenting and moving the sliders back and forth a lot to see what I think uh, complements each other best. So I duplicated the layer and brought it straight into Liquify. In Liquify I usually will bring down the shoulders of the models just to make them look a bit more relaxed. Um, I like to make the hair a lot bigger and I like to just do some minor adjustments on the clothing and of course I made the horse's hair bigger too because big hair is awesome. <laughs> So this corset didn't cinch, um, this corset was a little bit big on the model, so it didn't cinch super tight. So what I'm doing here is just trying to bring the waist in a little bit more. So this is what it would look like if the corset did cinch as much as it was supposed to. But sometimes we have to work with costumes that aren't perfect fit for the models, which is alright. Um, so this is how I would go about adjusting that so it looks like the model's body type. Um, so I went back into Liquify and just made the lips slightly larger. And played around with the jawline um, slider as well. So now you can see what we've done there. And now I'm doing frequency separation. So I duplicated my layers and did a Gaussian blur layer and another layer with um, apply image. And now I am taking the color layer, which was which is the second layer, and blending out the colors so there's smoother transitions throughout the image of her face with the color transitions. Makes the skin look a lot smoother and uh, more of a high fashion fantasy type of skin when everything's really smooth like that. And then I go to the next layer and it's just because the next layer is just texture so I will remove any um, blemishes or things like that or unwanted texture from the image. And now I have a curves adjustment layer that I'm using to do my dodging with. So I take a curves adjustment layer, um, make it really bright, and then invert the layer mask. And then I take my brush tool with a white brush on like a 1% flow and go in and make all the highlights that I want to make. And once I'm done with that, I will go in and do the same thing for my dodging. So I'll take a curves adjustment layer and make it darker and then invert the layer mask and use a brush tool, a soft brush on 1% flow to do the shadows and the contouring on the face and the arms. Using curves adjustment layers to do your dodging and burning is a really non-destructive way 
um, of dodging and burning. So that is, that's why I prefer it a lot, is because it's non-destructive. I can always go back and make adjustments to it later. Uh, now I have a selective color adjustment layer open. So this is when I get to experiment with color and figure out exactly the mood and style that I want for the image. So I'll just be playing around with these sliders, going back and forth, saying do I like this color or this color. And once I finish that, I open up gradient maps. So um, when I do my gradient maps, I will lower the opacity to between 5 and 10%. And then I will uh, duplicate that gradient map and add another color and keep doing that. And then I go to uh, change the blending mode to... Um, overlay and then I add a few gradient maps like that and then I do it again with the blending mode on multiply. So I stack a lot of gradient maps on top of each other um, to get that really moody feeling in my images. And now I have a levels adjustment layer just to brighten it up a little bit and adding some contrast as well. The grass ended up being a bit too bright and vibrant for me, so I went back and selected those and did a selective color with them separately to darken them down a bit. Now I can see the before and then the after. So that is all that I would do for that image, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching that. Um, if you have any questions about how I do my retouching, or if you have videos that you'd like to see in the future, let me know in the comments and I'd love to try and answer your questions and I would, and I will do my best to make videos that you guys want to see. So have a great day you guys and I will see you in my next video. Bye!